professor in, for chemistry at the University of Graz in Austria. And uh, I'm also a leader of the working group uh, Renewable Resources, Chemistry and Technology of Renewable Resources. And I've been dealing with biofuels for a long time, for over 25 years now. We started uh, activities on biofuels, uh, especially on biodiesel, uh, on the chemical process. We developed process technology for biofuels, uh, especially biodiesel, from different sources, uh, mainly on waste material, not really fresh material, not food material, but waste. Uh, and I've been engaged in a whole setup of uh, several uh, biodiesel plants worldwide. Today I want to speak a little, not only on biofuels, uh, but especially on synthetic fuels. Uh, the reason for that topic was that a colleague of mine at the University of Technology asked me uh, what would be the fuel in the future. So we have biofuels already, a substitute for conventional fossil fuels. We have reached a level, maybe we can't go further, it's a level of about 5%, maybe we can uh, substitute 10% and uh, what is the future? We need transport fuel or electric car is one option, electric mobility, but for sure if you look at the streets, especially here in Dubai, a lot of cars are running, a lot of trucks are running uh, and just uh, uh, switch to electric uh, cars or electric transport uh, could be an option, uh, but only a part, could be only part of the solution. Uh, so the colleague asked me uh, to give a presentation, so it was uh, one month ago, on this synthetic fuel. Are there any other chances, any other options uh, than biofuels or electric fuels? So if you look to the web uh, concerning synthetic fuels, especially in the last year, there were a lot of uh, activities, a lot of announcements, you see here synthetic uh, transform sunlight to hydrogen fuel, uh, new pattern for carbon capture, uh, CO2 as source for fuel, so that would be a challenge to take out the CO2 of the atmosphere, concentrations rising in the last 450 years, take it out and use it as carbon source. Here is these are also such uh, terms like carbon neutral, synthetic fuel, green for car makers, uh, and especially also because of the also the, the uh, problems uh, concerned with diesel fuels. You know the problems uh, in Europe, but also I think uh, in US and other regions about these emissions, NOx emissions, and this. Well, Volkswagen case in, in uh, Germany. Uh, so there is, of course, need for alternatives. Uh, well, and the main trigger for these alternative fuels, synthetic fuels, biofuels, is of course uh, to reduce the overall greenhouse gas emissions, and therefore there are very ambitious goals uh, all over the world. That's just the uh, ambitious goals from uh, the European Biofuel Technology Platform. Uh, so we have reached a peak of, well, uh, these uh, fossil fuels and in the future we have to reduce the overall uh, use of, of, of uh, uh, fuels. Uh, these are the goals, very ambitious to 2050, so you see, well, uh, in Europe uh, it should go down, uh, mainly because uh, also of uh, electric mobility. But you see here, these are just perspectives. Uh, I'm quite sure that we wouldn't reach it, uh, but the amount of fossil energy will go down, it has to go down, uh, because we have to reduce these overall greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so that could be the target uh, on this uh, fuel mix, uh, the part of uh, uh, oil, fossil, will go down significantly. We will have biofuels uh, and also we, have, we will have electricity. So what are the different options?
options. What do you see here? Uh, you can't say there is only one solution or one alternative. In the future, there will be a lot of different uh, possible uh, fuels for different transport options. Uh, and here you see, uh, well, uh, the need for liquid fuels. If we go up this pyramid, uh, we have uh, more than liquid fuels. And here is a possibility for electrification. Uh, so both are necessary. And the ideal use of electricity for transport is especially for light duty road vehicles and urban, urban services. Uh, like in these regions like here, Dubai, maybe uh, will be a good chance for uh, transferring it into electric, uh, electric uh, mobility. And also the big cities uh, will ban out in the future uh, combustion engines because of these emissions, especially uh, emissions of toxic substances. Uh, on rail, okay, you have electricity <coughs> mainly. Uh, but if you go up for especially heavy duty road vehicles, it means transport on the road, big heavy trucks, they wouldn't run uh, so easily with elect uh, electric uh, energy because then they have to transport 50% of their load for batteries, 50% uh, they could load other things. Uh, here there are actually no alternatives uh, for uh, there are alternatives, but they should be liquid, uh, as you will see, or maybe also uh, compressed uh, gases like hydrogen or uh, synthetic natural gas. And for aviation and marine, so for marine you can't also uh, not uh, see the chance that electric uh, big uh, ships are running with electricity. And for aviation we don't have, only have the chance uh, to have liquid fuels. So it will be in the future a mix of all of them. Well, coming back to my original topic, synthetic fuels, what are they really? I'm an organic chemist and have also did a lot of synthesis work, but for fuels uh, it looks a little bit different, the definition. If you look to Wikipedia, you see it's a liquid fuel, sometimes gaseous, obtained from swim gas, a uh, mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Uh, well, uh, and these swim gas can come from coal, biomass, or reforming natural gas. And there are a lot of different uh, names for different types of fuels. It's not easy if, uh, if you are not familiar with this uh, group of uh, alternative fuels. Uh, you find the term X to add fuels. It means X, some source to liquid fuels, to make liquid fuels out of different sources. For instance, natural gas, that's already done, uh, coal to liquid, that's also available, but they are still uh, fossil resources. Biomass to liquid is an option, uh, also they are called feature crops, diesel, sun diesel, you could use methanol, dimethyl ether, a big variety. Then there is another term, power to liquid, power means electricity, to use only electricity, uh, and uh, especially uh, carbon dioxide as a feedstock. Uh, and the main energy for production is electric power. Uh, again, you find the same uh, fuels, it could be hydrogen, methane, or synthetic natural gas, uh, methanol, alcohols, and so on. Uh, in general, you could call it so called E fuels, electric fuels, that means of liquid or gaseous fuels made out of electricity. And the feedstocks are water, CO2, biomass. It could be also, uh, for instance, uh, biofuels, biodiesel would very well. We have a lot of uh, biofuel plantations and uh, something like uh, 50 or uh, even um, 60 million tons worldwide. Today we cover 4% of the whole transport fueled by biofuels already. The general goal of new uh, approaches, new fuels for transport are especially a significant reduction of greenhouse gases and utilization of renewable energy, especially energy which couldn't store like photovoltaic energy, 
it could be stored in batteries, but you know the problems of batteries, <coughs> the better way is to store it in kind of fuels, uh, which could be either liquid or gaseous. The history of these synthetic fuels are going back, uh, especially uh, 1913, 1926, uh, hydrogenation of coal. It's very, really, very really well known technology, but uh, also the liquid hydrocarbon fuels from synthesis gas, uh, 1926, coal liquefaction. Of course, they are not uh, sources. Uh, their source is still on, based on uh, fossil resources. First Fischer Tropsch plant, 1936. Uh, what was the reason for that? Uh, in <coughs> Second World War in Germany, Germany was uh, banned from the imports fossil, they didn't have any oil, uh, but it had a lot of coal, uh, coal and therefore they used the coal, liquefied coal, uh, by this Fischer Tropsch. Uh, plant and therefore could uh, support the uh, war machinery uh, with these coal fuels. Uh, Sasol, a very well known South African company, uh, produced uh, coal to liquid uh, fuels uh, and the idea was uh, 2009 uh, BTL plant producing liquid diesel fuels out of uh, biomass. The problem was 2011 it went bankrupt. So the reasons are quite default. I couldn't go into detail. Well, yeah, a little bit about chemistry. Sorry for that, but uh, I will explain it uh, more generally. Uh, the principle of these fuels is uh, quite easy. So if you burn, for instance, gasoline, that's uh, well, uh, not a formula, but you see it's uh, something like octane, you know, octane number, octane is gasoline. If you burn octane with oxygen, you get CO2 and water, and you get energy. And the principle now is the following, that you take energy, especially electric energy, photovoltaic energy, and make the reaction from the right side to the left side. That means CO2 and water as starting material, and then you get gasoline, you get diesel, and so on. But you need, of course, a lot of energy. It looks simple, but actually it's not so simple. As you will see here, well, if we take CO2, if we take hydrogen, we could make this uh, gasoline. But we need uh, quite a lot of energy. The question is where to get hydrogen. CO2, it's quite clear, we could take it out of the atmosphere. It's also not so easy because it's only in small amounts in the atmosphere. Uh, we need energy to uh, concentrate this CO2. And the hydrogen, well, every chemist learned it in the first semester. You can make, uh, use water, the water reserves, we have a lot, and then they split it by electric power, and we have hydrogen and oxygen. So, uh, in more detail, uh, it's quite more complicated. Uh, then we have hydrogen, we have uh, carbon monoxide actually. The basic, uh, what we really need is hydrogen and carbon monoxide. This is a so called synthesis gas, so it's also called a syn gas, or if it's renewable, it could be also called sun gas. And then you make, uh, with these two uh, components, uh, you could make synthesis of a lot of different uh, uh, products. You see here, starting with your CO2, energy, water. Water you split to hydrogen. Carbon dioxide has also been, has to be split into uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And then you could make a lot of, you could make gasoline, you could make <coughs> diesel fuel, uh, you can make alcohols, so you're quite flexible. So in detail, it's far more complicated, and uh, you see the different options, which I don't want to discuss in detail. Uh, here, it's a similar picture. Uh, so we have, for this synthesis gas, 
we could make it out of natural gas. Of all these fossil sources, NAFTA, heavy oil, can make it of coal. We could also use industrial waste, that's also an option. Uh, a waste, especially plastic waste. We have a lot of plastic waste available, uh, which are, is not uh, <coughs> utilized uh, and, and it's polluting our planet. Uh, we could make it out of biomass, or we could also make it out of CO2 in water. The benefit just using carbon dioxide is that for biomass we need uh, areas to grow different feedstocks, so that's uh, a lot needs a lot of energy, a lot of land, uh, and all the discussions related with that. If we take out it from CO2, uh, it's quite easier. Yeah, we could get a so-called uh, synthetic natural gas. It's a gas, but it could be liquefied quite easily. We could make, for instance, methanol. Methanol is a very well suited uh, fuel for gasoline cars. We could also produce our dimethyl ether, or we can make synthetic uh, gasoline, and we could make uh, diesel fuels uh, also out of it. So it's, it's a quite flexible uh, possibility. So, a uh, more general uh, picture to see what are we facing. We want to produce CO and we want to produce hydrogen. CO2 and water are the end products of burning any kind of uh, carbon-based fuel. Uh, so that's the end. Uh, so there's no energy left in CO2, no energy left in water. What we need, we have to split it with, with a lot of energy. We have to split carbon dioxide in carbon monoxide and oxygen and water in, uh, as I already mentioned, in hydrogen and oxygen. You see here quite a lot of energy is needed and then we could make out fuels. For that process, the last step, we don't need so much energy. Most of the energy goes into these first two steps. The power of the uh, energy could come from solar energy directly photovoltaics. It could come also uh, by, uh, uh, you could split it by thermolysis. Uh, you need temperatures 2,000 to 4,000 degrees uh, that you could produce out of, also out of solar energy, uh, focusing the solar energy in some special points where you could heat up uh, different devices. Uh, you could make it uh, catalytically uh, by photocatalysis or photoelectrolysis. There are a lot of options available. Technology are uh, present, uh, but there are still a lot of technologies also here in development. Uh, well, one idea is also one of these synthetic fuels is synthetic natural gas, which actually is methane. Methane, which normally uh, is a fossil-based uh, product, but you can, could also make it out of uh, renewables, uh, with renewable energy. Uh, you need, again, hydrogen, which we already mentioned. Uh, uh, these electrolysis of water, uh, there are different options. Uh, there are mainly electrolysis, uh, alkali electrolysis, very well known. You see the efficiency quite high, uh, commercially available, but there are also new developments like this polymer electrolyte membrane electrolysis is PEM. Uh, it's only available prototypes, but it has higher efficiency. A lot of actions are going on, uh, further improving this uh, technology. This is the uh, hydrogen production. Uh, and then we need the reaction between hydrogen and carbon dioxide and we get this uh, methane product. It's a so-called meth methanization from synthesis gas. It's highly exotherm, that means we don't need energy, so we, uh, it, it, it already provides some energy. But the problem which you see here, uh, out of this hydrogen, the half of this hydrogen goes into water and half of it goes into methane. So if you burn methane, we will lose 50% of our hydrogen. So if you compare hydrogen 
to methane, you have to say maybe it's better to use the hydrogen instead. But there are a lot of activities and lo uh, a lot of research uh, areas covering these uh, synthetic natural gas. There's also a possibility to produce bio, uh, a bio SNG. That means you start with uh, wood. We have such a pilot plant in Austria where uh, wood is, uh, is used as starting material. You make the gasification, uh, then you make a gas cleaning, and uh, because uh, especially sulfur components have to be taken out and a lot of impurities because they are poisons of, for catalysts. Then you make the methanization, then you get this synthetic natural gas and you could use it uh, as fuel. Of course it's gaseous, so you have to compress it and put it into tanks. Or you could put it directly in the uh, grid uh, of uh, natural gas grid uh, and then transport it via the traditional natural gas uh, pipelines. But here's the problem actually. Uh, what are the price? What could be uh, the price for these products? Especially I just show you one synthetic natural gas and the hydrogen. Uh, and uh, there are some figures which were calculated that this synthetic natural gas costs about uh, 11,000 euro per ton if it's made out of this CO2 route or made out of uh, biomass. The current market price of natural gas, natural gas is very uh, cheap. Uh, if you see that the spot price is 130 euro. So the factor for this uh, Renewable natural gas uh, is factors of 90 or 130 times higher than uh, natural gas, which is produced out of uh, <coughs> fossil uh, products. Who will pay for that? For hydrogen, it looks a little bit better. Uh, for hydrogen, we have a price of about 11,000 or 10,000 euro per ton. The current market price of hydrogen, which is made out of natural gas, is about 900 euro per ton factor, something like 10. If you compare it with biofuels, biofuels are almost at the same level uh, than uh, uh, fossil fuels, maybe 10%, 20% higher, but here we have a factor 10 or 100. That means that the price for uh, crude oil has to go up 10 times or 100 times. Uh, which today is about uh, $65 uh, per annum. Uh, so we have to wait or we have to give some support from the governments. Uh, <coughs> well, here one example just, just to show you that we also could, because this uh, synthetic natural gas is a gas, so you have to liquefy. There are options that you make out of this gas, some gasoline, uh, product uh, that you get a, leak, uh, a liquid product. But still, then they have an additional step, and still uh, there would be uh, even higher price. There are also possible uh, ways to produce gasoline from methanol or dimethyl ether. Uh, there are well, pilot plants existing, but not really commercial plants. <coughs> 